Storytelling Podcast, episode number 10. Welcome to the Storytelling Podcast, where everything's fictional, even you. And now, here are your hosts. One of them is cute, the other two, not so much. Garrett, Zach, and Crystal. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Storytelling Podcast, the podcast that's all about fiction, fiction, and more fiction, and telling the best truths through the medium of lies. I am your host, Garrett Robinson. Uh, with me today, as per usual, is fellow author ZC Bolger, uh, author of Danny Calloway and the Puzzle House. Uh, conspicuously missing is uh, Crystal Logothetis VC Cole. Um, we have to record, uh, we had to double up on recordings this week. <laughs> double up. Um, and uh, in your endo. So we are doing this. However, Crystal is pregnant and it was not feeling the lateness of the hour. So we 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 kindly gave her a pass because we're pretty awesome. Yeah, you'll be hearing this two weeks after we record it. By that time, I'll be famous, and we'll have quit the podcast. Just as a little forewarning. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Zach. We said yeah. we were going to keep doing this even if we got famous. You've changed, man. <laughs> Kevin Smith still podcasts. Kevin Smith is dope. He has so many awesome things that he's doing. Yeah, he does. Have you seen his show, um, Comic Book Men? Hell yeah. Come yeah, on now. Who the, fuck, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> um, so what has happened uh, to you this week? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think in advance. Okay, so by the time this plays on the audio feed, I should have released Hit Girls' audio books. In other words, an audio book that you can download as a podcast and listen to the whole thing for free, which is pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. And are you recording that right now? I have been recording it. It's like a chunking away process, and then I have to edit it and format it correctly and upload it to the guy because his submission standards are really high. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I plan on yeah, doing so. mine while I'm when I'm out in L.A. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. Dope sauce. And uh, and so by the time by the t- also by the time okay so by the time this airs, Non Zombie Three will release tomorrow. In other words, ten days from today, which is uh, which is the day after this releases, and it is going to be releasing for the debut price of ninety nine cents. After which point, it will go up to two ninety nine. Oh, non so, non zombie three, non zombie three. Oh fuck yeah! I'm totally looking forward to that. Yeah, I know you, Do you are. You have it done. You should send it to me before I leave. <laughs> I totally like, don't have it done. I don't have fucker. it started. I have the I have the outline. That's it. All right. Oh, by the time that this airs, Ninja Bread Man will be on. Yeah, but like, yeah, but like a long time ago. Okay, that we said it was going to be on a long time ago. So shut up. Two weeks ago, you said it was going to be done. So shut up. Today, it has and to be to, done. We have to talk about this. Do you also feel good about debuting that at ninety nine cents and then raising it afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm using, I'm using Ninja Bread Man more as a funnel for Danny Calloway. That's uh-huh. what I'm hoping from. Use it. your funnel. Uh, yeah. In your endo. In your. Um. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. But I, I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be. I think be it's awesome. going to be great if we can, if we really get the promo on it. And honestly, from what I, I mean, the beats that I beat out. Um. Yeah. In your end, you though. <laughs> um. You waited. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was just waiting for it. Uh, those I think were great. And then what? What I've read so far of what you've done with them is fantastic. You know, I was, you know, laughing my ass off. So I, I really can't wait to see the finished product and then you know be able to do my little edit and then finally get it out there and then expand from there. What I really want to do is get the next two done. And then I want to have little, you know, branches off in this universe, you know, Hell yeah. have, you know, Master Baker's story and shit like that. Um, and uh, just just keep an eye out for this. I don't even actually know if Zach knows about 
I, I, I don't know if I told you this, Zach, but I want to write a short story focusing specifically around one of the characters, and it's only going to be available to people who review uh, Ninja Bread Man compilation, uh, or, or it's got to be like gift box, or like, or like box right. of chocolates one, two, and three. Basically, the first three volumes all packaged up together, and if they leave a review and send me a link, then I will give them this short story, but it's not going to go anywhere else. Do you know which which character that is? Yes, but I don't want to say. Okay, I'm gonna type it in the chat because I think I know who you're gonna say. Okay. So this is fascinating for everybody <laughs> who's listening. Actually, it's fascinating for everybody who's watching too. <laughs> oh, okay. Guess... That's not who I thought you were gonna say. You were gonna say. I, I thought you were it was gonna, gonna be... say. I thought it was gonna be the fairies. Yep. Oh no 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 no! Their story, which no, I think would be, be a easy. fucking great story. But then, but then again, it, I, I don't know how much a reader, if a reader, could put up with an entire book of. That's <laughs> another problem. Scots. Yeah, they are you know? so fucking Scottish. It's amazing. Yeah, you haven't even read that entire scene yet, but that that entire scene is actually done and exported as a Moby file. I would love it if you would read chapter three tonight and 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 give me your your. Feedback I'll read it on a plane it. tomorrow. That's what I'll do. I think it, I think snakes it'd be on a plane. There's Ninja nothing to do with snakes. Plane. Ninja bread on a plane. That'll be our. Um, go ahead. Turn off. Uh, that, that'll, that'll be our movie adaptation. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson will do the voice of the Ninja Bread Man. That would be awesome. <laughs> I never pictured him as a black dude, but that could totally work. Hell Did yeah, you, I, you he know, could be. He he does the he does the voice. Or he uh, narrates uh, "Go the fuck to bed" or "Go the fuck to sleep." That go the fuck to sleep. Yeah. Have you read that book? Yeah. No. It, no. But it, I've listened to the audio. Okay, I've read the book. Yeah. I haven't listened to the audio. It's fucking hilarious. Right. I think it's so funny. So amazing. I can't wait to do the audio version of Ninja Bread Man. That's going to be so yeah. amazing. Do we want to do different voices? I I want to do voices for the Scots. You can't yeah, okay. not. You can't read right. that without we doing the Scottish We should do this while voice. I'm out in L.A. Hell yeah. Hell you yeah, know? we should. Because I'm thinking, honestly, I feel like my voice would be better for the Ninja Bread Man because it's higher pitched than yours. Right. So you, you know, want me to narrate and do some of the voices and then you do some of the other character voices? Yeah, we could go kind of back and forth kind of thing. Okay, it, cool. I like that. We, yeah, like we, that. we can work it out. We'll see how it works. If if not if it doesn't work out, we can always just do one straight, you know, um uh voice actor, but I, I think I think it'd be fun to have at least two different people doing two different voices. So that you can If tell we do that though, we people. gotta get a girl on it. In on it to do the girl voices. I mean, as long as we're going that step, we may as yeah, well just sure. go that extra step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because otherwise it's going to be weird. I have I have the very monumental task of narrating uh, of of uh, audio booking hit girls. So I'm doing <laughs> the main voices for Jesse and Nikki. And oh, that should be interesting. It is. I. Uh, I had works. somebody. That's fine. When I first was. It, talking about Danny Calloway, um, before I did my Kickstarter, like months and months ago, I actually had three different people contact me about being the audiobook voice talent for it. Really? Is, yeah. And obviously, they wanted to be paid. And I was like, fuck that. I want to do it myself anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And I have connections, which is great, in LA to a professional audio booth. Like a studio. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I might actually be doing um, it through there because my dad used to work in post production back in the right. day. So uh, we have right. really good, good connections day. there. Yeah. Awesome. That's totally yeah. sweet. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then, okay, so it's 10 days in the future. What else has happened? Well, at that point, I'll be working flat out on uh, my project with Sean Platt, which I'm going to kind of take a little chunk of time and just bang that out and just get, bang like, it. two episodes done a week until it's, <laughs> I said bang. It's a bang. Uh, in your endo. Okay, just no more of that clip. That's four times in this one podcast. In your endo. <laughs> wow. What did you think I was going to do when you said that? Come on. You're the one who said it. 
Garrett is the anal, you know, fucking grammar Nazi. It wasn't, appro- it wasn't appropriate, but... Oh, by the way, Crystal, you've been really, really quiet over there. What's happening? I'm Just a married woman. I have laundry to do. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in the beginning of that clip? Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um... So, topic. We do have a topic tonight, despite what you all probably think. Actually, what you all probably think at this point is these people are terrible people. Um, <laughs> but If there's anybody still listening. Yeah. Hi, Chrissy. No, you're playing D&D up in Seattle, goddammit. Before um, we actually get onto topic. Um, yeah, okay. I, I, you know, I, his name has slipped my mind. You probably know. But our last podcast, not our last podcast, the podcast before... Ed about Ditto? tackling the white no ta- yeah I think so tackling the white page that question oh that um, one yeah was that three ago yeah it was it one was of the our, one before one of our Ed. listeners no I'd no it was see. the one yeah I have to see who it was I totally forget his name um but it it inspired him yes yes yeah it inspired him to do a, a a vlog uh with our question which was fucking awesome and i loved seeing that so i definitely want to say that if any listeners out there get inspired by anything that you know we're talking about and it's like oh i want to i want to put this onto my blog or i want to you know create off of this idea as well totally fucking go for it you know yeah, unless totally. it's you know one of our story ideas but <laughs> other than that it's and open yeah, exactly. And if you tweet about it, we'll give you a shout out on the show. I mean, that you know doesn't take a whole lot of effort on our part, unless there's like eight thousand of you that all of a sudden are like, "We did this." Then we'll just be like, "Congratulations, all of you!" Yeah, and then we'll be like, "Where the hell are all of our stats that are going with these eight thousand people?" That are- <laughs> <laughs> we have seventy-seven exactly. subscribers, but we have eight thousand people that are tweeting us. I only have twelve followers on Twitter, but eight thousand people <laughs> tweeted me. <laughs> no, I have a hundred. I have hundred and seventy followers on Twitter, and uh, what's awesome is that I didn't pay for any of them, so that's great. I don't have very many paid left. <laughs> Twitter. Now, I, I'll say this on the pocket: I have nothing against it personally. But here's the reason why I paid for Twitter subscribers because uh-huh. I continue to have people subscribe to me and expect me to subscribe back and follow them back. Which I don't right. want to do because I only want to follow people that I'm interested in seeing what they do. So I kept having my numbers go up and down, but having a right. higher, a higher, a higher following rate, it makes it right. the people that fuck you, the people that follow me, don't expect me to follow them back, and I actually like that better. You, you dick. I, cool. <laughs> you know how I get followers? How do you get followers? Writing books. <laughs> Really? I'm serious. I'm serious. When I started writing, I had 60, and now I have 170. And all of them have started following me from the thing. And I I used to follow pretty much anybody that I was interested in, and then at some point I capped it, and I, I never go above 100. So if there's somebody new that I want to follow, I have to go through the list of people I'm already following and be like, eh, I don't really like this person. Or like, this person never tweets, or this person tweets... There, uh, to be totally honest, I go, I don't go to my Twitter feed for news or for inspirational quotes or or whatever. I go to my Twitter feed to laugh. So everybody that I follow is is funny and interesting in some way. So like sure. I I have unfollowed a lot of people who are like, be the best person that you can be. I'm like I will follow you up to a point, and then at one point I want to follow. Louis C.K. and you're off my list. <laughs> right, my cap is thirty. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Honestly, there I there there aren't very many people, and even on the I think I have twenty. I'm following twenty seven people. I'm pretty sure there's at least five that I don't really give a shit about, and we'll switch them out. You know who knows who they are? I'm pretty sure one of them is you, Garrett. But um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> But no, but the thing is, is that like on my normal, uh, I, because I bought the Twitter followers, Twitter eventually goes through and starts deleting the accounts. So right. if you looked at my numbers, you know, uh, three months ago, it, went, <laughs> it was 4,000, it was at 4,000 followers, right? And you're like, holy shit, right. he's following, followed by 4,000 people. If you look at it now, it's 400. And right. I, you know, it's because Twitter is doing that. But I have gained so much 
so many followers um, from writing and from this podcast and from being mentioned by Johnny as well. And tweets, right. actually. A lot of tweets. I got. I think I got four followers from tweeting something about Boston like two days ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, if you tweet about something topical like that, so. Which honestly is like I don't I I try not to do things like that like I I yeah I, me neither I, I wasn't said expecting. one thing about Boston today but it's just like I don't want people to follow me because I'm talking about Boston I want people to follow me because um I'm a writer and hopefully right, they exactly. think that my books and films are funny and that's so. but that's that's what was surprising to me because I wasn't expecting it I was yeah. I was forwarding a friend's um song that she wrote oh you know? interesting yeah so and then I got you know subscribers and I was like, what the fuck anyway. speaking of songs i um i got off work today and i uh i had like sort of decided that i was going to play shipping up to boston this this like weekend like listen to it a lot like in solidarity or whatever the fuck and then i actually like started playing it and listened to it and like paid some pretty close attention to the lyrics which i hadn't done in a while and then i was like yeah maybe not i don't know what's the i don't know that song i don't think by the dropkick murphys uh, yeah, I'd have to hear I, it. I, I, it's it's basically it, it, they're like a they're a very Celtic Scottish like Boston punk rock band. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know uh, the band. Yeah, so they're awesome. And the song is "I'm shipping up to Boston to find my wooden leg." <laughs> shipping up to Boston, I lost my leg. Shipping up to Boston, I lost my leg. And I was uh, like, okay, so yeah. forgot about that part of the song. Yeah. maybe not actually a good thing. So. I apologize to anybody who was in Glendale today that I drove by blasting that song. Oh, seriously? I don't know. What? But well, then it's, Glen you know. it's Glendale. How many of them have family in Boston? Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. I, was, I, yeah, I, I totally know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes racism. <laughs> the way they did it in the 80s. <laughs> You know what else happened in the 80s? Indiana Jones. Because that's Hell what yeah. Indiana Jones does. He fucks lesbians a lot. He does. He does. He All fucks so many lesbians. All right, so can we fucking get on topic now? Yeah, let's get on topic. I blame you for that whole last seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, my, my what are we talking was, about today, Zach? We're, we're, we're doing another brainstorm sesh on Ninja Bread Man 2 and 3. We're going to leave yeah. off the ending for at least the third one because we want that to be a surprise. We'll yeah. figure that out later. Um, but what we need to figure out, we need to figure out characters. We need to figure out... Um, what else do we need to figure out? We need to figure okay, out locations. We both, already, we, already, we both already know who the antagonist is at the end of three, right? Right, You, yeah, you yeah, told yeah. me that last time. The overall time. antagonist. Okay, good. So that's I think enough. that's a good antagonist. Right. Okay, good. I think that's fantastic. Right, and we'll have to... Yeah. <laughs> we'll what? have to figure out somebody other than you or me to do that person's voice. Like... Why? Oh, because, because of who he is? He, yeah. Who or she, maybe. Is. <laughs> who they are. We should change it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so do you want to try and nail down an, an antagonist for two? I think I, I have think an idea should. on that. Yeah, tell me. I have an all idea. Right. Okay. Yep, now. Captain Hook. Captain Hook. It's okay. perfect in a lot of ways. Captain, um, okay, tell tell me about this character. Who is he? What does he do? Like, how does he tie in? He is uh, a captain of a of a smuggling vessel, and the they he smuggles the majority of the things for the Green Fairy. Um, okay. And he's the next step. Actually, he should be more like he should be, he should be an admiral. <laughs> so when he bus when Charlie busts in, he's like Captain Hook. It's Admiral. Get him. <laughs> 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 Admiral Hook. Um, do do we need? I don't know if like is Captain Hook. Uh, is that open? Because it's Disney. That's yeah. My only question. Uh, I don't. I think Snow White I is. I think so. I would assume. I oh, think but, so because I mean we did fucking Peter Pan in school as a as a play. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but did they have Peter Peter Pan was a play a long time before it was uh, a, a Disney movie. Right, but we licensed that from whoever owned that section of the play. That's what Delphi. I guess. Yeah, that's what the high school does. Um, okay. We'll need to look into that. That's all. Whereas, like, you know, right. the Ninja Ninja Bread Man or the Gingerbread Man or whatever, that's not something you could really license. I don't think Snow White yeah, is either. Okay. You know? Now, I know that we talked about this, too, but I have to I have to mention this as a tangent. Gandalf needs to be in the second one because, <laughs> because Crystal, because of... Uh, just because, because you know, he was he was such a, a fundamental part of the last brainstorming session. But of course, we can't say his name. He's just an old, tall, gray wizard with a blue pointy hat. And Charlie, you know, what's your name? I cannot say. Why not? <laughs> Copyright infringement. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we gonna call him? Wizard? Yeah, just the wizard. You know. <laughs> Copyright infringement. Uh, you texted me that, or you, or you emailed me that, or something. I just remember laughing my ass off. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> Copyright infringement. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, is he going to be someone that helps Charlie? Oh, for those who, well, I mean, you should have read the book by now, but Charlie is the gingerbread man's real name. Right. Currently, yeah. we are thinking of changing it. We're not totally sure on that, but yeah. If anybody uh, has a better idea, toss it out before we publish. <laughs> before we publish in the next day or two. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he could be a helper. I see. I see him as generally being a helpful person. I wouldn't yeah. want Gandalf to be in there and be, go all Saruman. Yeah. Well, I was also thinking it should be like, "You shall not uh <laughs> get by me." <laughs> you shall not um, go this way. <laughs> he should just uh, so many fucking lines from the Lord of the Rings that he has to change <laughs> because of copyright infringement. <laughs> Fool of a of of a of a of a gingerbread man. <laughs> I like that, and that's a perfect right, character so... for you to write too. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, so just so you know, because I know that you haven't, I, I know you haven't read this uh, this far into what I've written yet, but yeah. Mick and Brent become sidekicks. They Mick go shows back up. along with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Mick does, I, and <laughs> I got through the beginning of chapter two. So, right, he shows up in in the middle of chapter four. He's okay. still running. <laughs> because <laughs> he forgot what the hell was happening yeah he, all he knows is that somebody's chasing him <laughs> so he totally forgot and then when he sees him he remembers and he freaks out but Charlie's like dude I, I, I don't, I don't want to kill you I was there for uh, for P. Ed Piper yeah <laughs> P. Ed Piper it's pied no 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 it was the other way around Oh, he, he says, said, Pied Piper. Ah, he says, Pied. Good to, yeah, good to see you, Pied. It's it's French. It's pronounced Pied. <laughs> Pied Pipe. <laughs> um, now, do, you're, so you're having Brent be a sidekick. You don't want yes. him coming in in the end with like the saving wave of... No, everybody does, but Brent is with him the whole time. Brent, uh, okay. Brent asks to go with him because Brent is the, the whole clan sees Brent as mentally retarded. They think okay. he's they think he's slow in the head because he God, you haven't read this part yet. He talks like a normal person. Oh, and see, Charlie's I was trying like, to portray him as being gay. Right. No, I I I didn't go that direction. I mean, he could okay. be a uh, technically. No, that's fine. But he I basically. Just, the, they're all talking, and Charlie's like, "I don't understand." And finally, they're like, "Brent!" And Brent comes over, and he's like, "Good day, good day, sir. How can I help you today?" And he's like, "I can understand you." And he says, "Yes, I was born with a horrible speech impediment. I sound like an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so the reason why I had him gay, which is totally fine that he doesn't have to be gay, 
But I really like the idea, mm-hmm. for one, of having a gay character. But for two, the gay mm-hmm. character being the saving grace of the entire fucking book. I loved that idea. Well, well he still could be. See, what I've, got, what I've got lined up for him is that... Um, well, uh, that that's part of one, and I don't really want to spoil that. But uh, he, he still is. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So now we can also have more goblins. Do we want to have goblins in other books, or, or are they just going to be kind of like the Hansel and Hansel and Gretel, Hansel and Gretel um, minions? I think they'd be the Hansel and Gretel minions. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think we um, I think we can move on to something else for the next one. Witches. Oh well, I don't know if you brought up a. Did you have a, a mention of a witch? I know I had a mention of a witch in my yeah my beats. Yeah, um, a witch. The one that a witch. Um, <laughs> so basically, what happens with the witch? She tricked the Scots away from their homeland. She came in and she challenged them to a game of riddles, which they lost, and they had to leave the forest. And he right. said, "I we left and we lost it." What she she cast a spell so you couldn't find it? No, we lost it. You just you just lost it. <laughs> yeah, we cannot find it, <laughs> dude. I know where it is. <gasps> you know where it is, dude. Everybody knows where it is. Why didn't <laughs> anybody tell us? Boring. Because be, exactly. <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell us? Because every time you somebody shows up, you punch them to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, do you know now? Remember your whole idea with the the magical bagpipes. We still have yes. that in the book, right? Yes. Okay, good. The re- do you know why I was like, oh, that would be a good idea, actually, and why I actually got on board with that? Because I want to have a shirt with a ninja bread man playing bagpipes on it, and I just think <laughs> I just think it would be fucking awesome. <laughs> You're already into merchandising, you fucker. <laughs> I just think it was, that's honestly why I was like, I got that image and I went, this is a great idea. <laughs> if we can make it into yes. a shirt, it's going to be great. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so... So so the witch. Uh, so Wait, does the witch show up in book one then? Well, she's mentioned. She's told... She's mentioned, the, 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 but the she's Scots not in tell. the Black Forest. Right. So, do you want her to be the villain? Not necessarily. She could be. She, she could be should on the be. Way. No, she should be. She okay. should be. Yeah. That's why, because um, because she lured the Scots away from the forest so that nobody would be able to take the back the back entrance in. Back entrance in. Uh-huh. Um. In your endo. You're talking about the book one or book two. In in book one, they talk about how she lured the Scots away. Right, and then you were saying. But the she reason should... that she did that is she's working for the Green Fairy, and she did that so that nobody could get into the forest. Right. Yes. But so she's going to so be that the makes antagonist total in book sense. two. Right. 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 Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And um, with the backstory in book one of the Ninja Bread Man. Um, right. Does it? Oh well, I mentioned that he has like a big scar on his back from fighting a witch. I don't know if he, like I don't even remember oh, really? how I mentioned it. I don't think I incorporated that. Okay, that's fine. Because I was thinking it'd be fun okay. to have some like like before he meets Master Baker and gets all taught up. He went on. He's like, ah, I'm gonna fucking get revenge, and then you know runs into the witch and you know she fucks him up. Oh, yeah. No, I changed that part of the backstory. We should really go over that. Okay, but that's, that's fine. But we could. That could that's even fine. happen during yeah. his training with Master Baker. True. Yeah. How I had him introduced to Master Baker in the beats was he gets you know fucked up by the witch, and then Master Baker happens to be walking by and happens to have gingerbread <laughs> gingerbread ingredients on him because he's Master Baker. Master Baker. <laughs> right. No, I I switched that a little bit. That's fine. Um, uh, okay, now, so what's happening between Snow White and Red Rose in this one? Uh, Rose Red. Yeah, she's fucking, for one, Rose I Red. love, I love, I love that. I think that needs to also be a side story, by the way. Totally. You know, um, uh, you know who I picture as Rose Red? Who? Did you see 
Um, you saw Kill Bill one and two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you remember in Kill Bill one where they talk about O Ren Ishii growing up and she's like an like a total badass assassin, Lucy Liu's character. Yeah. Remember the the anime backstory for her when she was like young and and like growing up and it's all done in anime and she's dressed all in red leather and she like snipes a dude in a limo from like two miles away sounds really familiar I'd have to see the movie again I think yeah that's why I picture that, that oh. that's what I picture. Well, I think that's totally cool I think it'd be awesome if all if the if the sisters are Asian I that's, yeah. oh, that's totally. how I picture them you know totally totally which is funny because you don't think Snow White you don't think of an you know an Asian girl. Oh, you know who Snow White is? An Asian girl. Olivia Munn. Don't know her. What? Who's Olivia Munn? And vamp for a minute. I'm screen sharing. I have to find a picture of her. Oh God. Um. You so... watch the newsroom? No, no. You told me about it. I haven't started it. You watch the newsroom? No. Oh, you're such a cock. You watch The Daily Show? No. I don't watch TV. Zach? I have other things to be doing. You don't watch The Daily Show? No, I watch I watch Walking Dead. Yeah, so do I. That's but... about... No, you don't. You don't watch Walking Dead. Did you no, no, me? I watch TV. I think, oh. our, I think our audio is all fucked up and, like, out of sync. Okay. Um... There we go. Anyway, yeah, I don't I don't watch TV very much. I watch The Walking Dead Ugh. and that's about it. Terrible. Yeah. And there we go. Can you see her? Uh yeah, kinda. It's really shitty. But uh that's better. She's hot. She's super, super hot. Come on now. She looks really familiar. It's because she's in fucking everything. She's in New Girl. She's in the newsroom. She's in the Daily Show. She's, she's in, in a New Girl. Ton of I watched stuff. New Girl. Yes, she was this. She was Nick's stripper girlfriend. Oh yeah, her. That's right. Yes. Anyway, that's Snow White. That's funny to have a sister that looks like that, and the other sister looks like Lucy Liu. Yes, that's what's amazing. <laughs> Dude, if we could ever actually turn this into a TV show and get the two of them, I would I would just Use never stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad my wife doesn't listen to this show. Anyway. Uh, anyway, moving swiftly onward. All right, Olivia Munn. I've noted that down to put into the... Uh... Okay, so but what happens between the two of them? Because we don't really right. go into anything between the two of them in book one. Right, because they don't find Rose Red in book right. one. Um, but I think, are you putting Rose Red in the backstory of the Ninja Red Man as I? Yes, it? exactly okay. as. Okay, good. Um, well, they obviously need to run into her in book two. Right, of course. So, but she's not going to, if she dies, I don't know if she will die, but if she dies, she'll die in book three. Okay. Or if maybe she's under a spell or I don't Exactly, no. Um, okay. Here's what I was thinking with was that Snow White was trying to get to her because she killed their mother. Right. I, like, that's the idea I had. Right. But it's, it was like, it's a half-ass, like, oh, here's an idea of a backstory because I wasn't thinking of a backstory for them, really. Right. So it could, honestly, it could be anything with them. Um, but she obviously, but she needs to get away somehow in book two. What if it's like this crazy, complicated, moral thing where basically... Okay, check this out. Like, like You're going to have to stick with me for a sec. Okay. Snow White grows up... <laughs> Snow White grows up blaming Rose Red for the death of their mother because her mother died in childbirth. And... Snow White is a little bit like obsessed with it because she was so in love with her mom. Mm -hmm. So she grows up blaming her for that and making her feel like shit all the time. So she actually grows up to be a bad person. 
and she commits other atrocities and becomes a murderer and an assassin and, and so on and so forth. But it all kind of started because Snow White was kind of an asshole about the whole thing. Okay, so is Snow White trying to kill her still then? Well, now she's trying to, yeah, now she's trying to kill her, but, like, she can't, she's she's blinded by her, you know, irrationality about the whole thing. Right. Uh, well, I mean, that would open up the storyline for Rose to be under, well, to, to live, basically. Right, right, to, like, find some redemption and whatever. Right. Um... But she was also a major part of the Ninja Bread Man's backstory, which would kind of be like, why isn't she dead? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She needs to die. Trust us on this one. Um, I think, I, I mean, yeah, that works. Uh, uh, maybe. It might not work, actually. Why do you say that? I don't know. It just, it seems a little bit it doesn't totally jive for me. Because then it's hard to like Snow White because she's who actually drove her sister insane. Right. That would be better if Snow White was actually a villain. Yeah, I agree. You know who doesn't... You know who, who should make an appearance in the second one? The Seven Dwarves. Oh, I was... <laughs> I originally had the Seven Dwarves noted down as... Uh, God, what the fuck was it? I think I we had that... Lexi Maxwell's Seven Kinky Dwarves. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cock, um, uh, gropey. God. Uh, um, let me see. Let me see. Cornholy. Um. <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think I was going to have them. That's why as... our show's rated explicit, motherfuckers. <laughs> I think I was going to have them as ninjas, but that was before I had the Snow White idea of having her be a ninja. And I don't right. like having so many fucking ninjas. Yeah, it's way too many ninjas. <laughs> yeah. um, they should be, they could be samurai, dwarf, little dwarf samurai. No. <laughs> um, Dopey's like asleep in his armor. They could be pimps. Hi ho. <laughs> hey, hi ho! <laughs> What's up? It's off to work, you go, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my dwarf hands strong. <laughs> Shit. Um. <laughs> no, I feel I feel like women's rights in general would take a, a fifty-year leap backwards if we did that. They they could be male prostitute pimps. <laughs> no, I didn't want to. No, get it's out not of it. better. No. <laughs> um, <coughs> this is a Lexi Maxwell story. <laughs> okay, so we have a witch. We have twelve dwarves. Seven, seven dwarves. Oh yeah, why did I say twelve? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's strange. Seven dwarves. Um, I have to invent five new dwarves. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, there was an eighth dwarf in Lexi Maxwell's uh, story who was only talked about in remembrance. <laughs> he was auto asphyxiation y, uh, auto erotic asphyxiation y, God. and he died. <laughs> That's horrible. It is pretty horrible. Um, it's a hilarious book, though. The Seven Dwarves should be like, like, like a, a tier, like. Um, you know how in video games you have to go up the tier, the boss tiers, like a Scott Pilgrim type of thing. Yes. Yeah, like yeah I like this. Um, but each one has to have a a different. Well, none of them can be samurai. Um, okay. I, or or Fuck ninjas. You. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say ninjas, but I mean samurai as well. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But we can have you know like they all need to be some different. Type. I'm thinking Mortal Kombat kind of thing. Right, right, right. No, you I know. totally get what you're saying. Um, oh, and, and I think in the third book, if we can do this, we should totally have the three fairies from Cinderella. Somehow, the three fairies from Cinderella. Yeah, yeah they. 
not sorry, not Cinderella. Snow, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Just gonna note that down. <laughs> um, Marjorie, you're always such a bit candid, Beatrice. <laughs> <laughs> You're always such a witch. That's what she should say. Totally. Because they're fairies. Okay, uh, seven dwarves, and, and then, like, after the tears, then they'll hit the witch, basically. Mm-hmm. Who is the witch? Wicked Witch of the West? Um... I mean, we could... That's the only real witch that has a character behind the name. Right. Except for, you know, Galinda or Glinda or whatever her name is. The Good Witch. The Good Witch. Okay, so we'll run with the Wicked Witch of the West for right now. Okay, good. We can we can switch that or do whatever. Yeah. The Triple W. What? Wicked Witch of the West. Ah, right. Um, and then we have the seven dwarves, which we should do Scott Pilgrim style, tiered. Um, okay, but n- now where are they located? And they should be in a tower. Maybe like like Rapunzel's tower. I just feel like that would get so boring. You have no change of scenery. You know, it's like chapter like one, scenery. he goes to the one tower. Chapter two, he goes to the next tower. Or the- Oh, I was thinking one chapter, he goes through the entire fucking thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we could check that out. Yeah, no, we're, it's going to have to, like, the entire book will be him getting and finding out where he's going. And then at the top, there's a talking mushroom that says, Sorry, Charlie, the witch is in another castle. Why? What? What? Mario. Sorry, Mario, the princess is in another castle. After okay. you just you beat to... the whole fucking level <laughs> and Toad is there and it's like, sorry, Mario, a princess is in another clip. Was that in, in N64? No, that was in the that was in Mario. Mario Mario, the original. It was in super all Nintendo. the Marios. Yeah. No, Nintendo. No Super. Just Nintendo. I don't know if I played that. Um, you were much more of a gamer when we were kids. Just realize that. I had a Game Boy. I want to I break you. Game Boy. <laughs> and I All played right. Zelda. All right. Moving okay, swiftly Wicked onward. Dwarf. Yeah. Wicked Witch of the West, Seven Dwarf Tier. So why why is he going to the Wicked Witch of the West? Bes- besides that, you know, she's bad. <laughs> Because when he was going, when he was going to Hansel and Gretel before, it was because he thought that they were the people that ran the Green Fairy. Right. So now we need to figure out why he would go to the Wicked Witch of the West. Just kidding. They're the she's the one who runs the Green Fairy. <laughs> he kills her. Just kidding. He's the one who runs the Green Fairy. Getting Talking really mushroom. sick of this. <laughs> Um, why would he be going after the Wicked Witch? I guess we should fi- figure out some actual motivations for our characters or something. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> well, we have vengeance for one. Yeah, well. That's obvious. Um, and that's... I mean, that's the reason for Rose Red. What if he's sort of taking out all of the lieutenants? Like, he takes out Captain Hook as the smuggler. He's taking out the Wicked Witch because she enchants the fairy dust or something like that, or she ca- casts the magic that... Um... Oh, okay. Dude, okay, I just you're had making another... Me, idea, so you're making me roll first. on this. What, what, if, yeah, yeah. what if the whoever our, our main guy is somewhere that has some... In- a spell put over it that he can't get through until he kills whoever put the spell there and that happened to be the Wicked Witch. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The leader is here and you can't get to him until you break through the spell. Well, how do you break through the spell? Well, you can find the person who cast it and force them to do it. How am I supposed to force her to do that? Well, you can force her to do it or you can kill her, but I think you should. Yeah, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so Wicked Witch of the West. 
What was your idea? Uh, not even close to as good as that one. Okay. You're writing it down? Yeah. I'm sure this is fascinating for the audio listeners. <laughs> They're okay. writing shit down again. Triple W cast spell over where blank is and has to kill her in order to get in. Now, okay. Now, yes? What? I know that tone of voice. Sorry, I had to cough. Um, I want to figure out a way to avoid the sequel curse, where the sequel's never as good as the first one because you're learning so much about the world and the character, and the character goes through like a personal growth and everything. So what if... In the first uh, one? In the, no, in the first one, it's so awesome because we're learning about the world and we learn about his backstory and we learn about all these different things, right? Right. What if a, what if a central element in, in 2 that will, that will, I think, make the story a lot better is for one reason, whether it's romantic or practical or whatever, he's trying to keep Snow White with him and she doesn't want to go with him. And either he's romantically interested in her or he thinks that her, because she's a really good fighter, that she could help him actually complete his quest. Or Master Baker says she is powerful, but she needs training and you need to take responsibility for her. Like something like that so that Charlie undergoes some actual, some actual personal growth and doesn't just cut people in half for the whole thing. Right. I like the idea of it being a love interest. Because okay. that that uh, gives a lot to something happening to Snow White in the end, where he's now you know he can show a lot of emotional range to it. Exactly. Um, not necessarily her dying because that would suck, but that would really um, suck. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. kill Olivia Munn. God damn it! I will not put that in the book. I will kill her with my penis. With my pain, with my dick in her vag. And we find out she's a listener. <laughs> oh, God. Olivia she was Munn, like, I was on list- board until you talked about that. Olivia Munn, if you're a listener, I just want to say how much I love you. Like, utterly. <laughs> utterly. Um, <laughs> yeah, because she has, well... Utters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Is that a fat joke? You calling her a cow? Nope. Nope. Not even a little bit. All right, so... Um, where were we? We're gonna oh, get another one star review for this episode. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody, we got our first one star review on iTunes. It was I thought it was hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> hey um, guys, uh, putting a girl in doesn't make you better than the self publishing podcast. It's like yeah, because that's why we put Crystal in. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we wanted to be better than the self publishing podcast. That's right. Trolls are funny. Everybody's going to have funny. haters like we talked about in one of our other podcasts. <laughs> so this is, an, uh, this is, this is good haters for Haters going to hate. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Whoever is listening to this, go watch the video so you can just watch what Garrett just did. Yeah, whatever, that the, was epic. whatever the time mark is. <laughs> and again. Somebody, somebody make a gif of that shit. <laughs> one of our um, talented listeners. Back to what we were doing. I like the idea of a love interest, but if Snow White wants to leave, she can fucking leave. That's the thing. So how is she going to stay? Well, okay, but they've already formed some sort of bond, right? So she's not just going to ditch in the middle of the night. So she comes to him and she's like, I'm going to go I'm gonna go take care of, of uh, Rose Red. And he says, and, and, you know, without even like realizing or admitting to himself why, he's like, you should come with me. And she's like, well, well, why would I do that? And he's like, well, because Rose Red is working for the Wicked Witch or something like that. Dun, like dun, he, dun. He, he convinces her, basically. He doesn't like for- <laughs> he doesn't tie her up and sling her over his shoulder. <laughs> of course <Ooh>. not. <laughs> but I'm just picturing like, but I like that. I think that's a good point. I was going to bring that up while you are talking, which is Rose Red is working for the Wicked Witch because that's where she's going to have to get away from. And I think if they, if we're going with a tower idea, obviously Rose Red is going to be going to do a kick-ass jump out the top window of the tower and then go like squirrel suiting across the, you know, forest or whatever. 
Oh, dude, they should get to the top of the tower, and Rose Red should be the last person guarding the Wicked Witch. And Snow White's like, I've been waiting a long time for this, sister. Rose Red's like, yes, yes, you have. And they square off, and they both get into their poses. And Rose Red... And Rose Red turns around and just dives out the window. (laughs) And the Wicked Witch is like, what? (laughs) And then Charlie throws a ninja star into her head, and she's dead. (laughs) I like there being a little bit more Battle of the Witch, though. Okay. <laughs> Shoot lightning and shit out of her fingers. It would be hilarious, though. That That is funny. You shoot lightning out of your fist, just like... Dr- blank. <laughs> what happened to my voice? Copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that's how we were originally going to go with Gandalf. Oh, my name is Beep. What, what was no, that? No, no, oh, no. I can't say my name because... No. Uh, no, 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 no. He should just say something, so a, a line from Lord of the Rings, like, I cannot speak its name, or something like that. No, yeah, like, I like... All I like of his like... lines should be things from Lord of the Rings. Right. I, I originally thought we were going to do it the other way, but I like how we worked it out. <laughs> My name is... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to your voice when you... Copyright infringement. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be funny, but it'd be a little too cheesy. It would be. I, I'm not saying that Gingerbread Men is on the same scale, but it's sort of taking on the unicorn western thing where it's like, I'm like, no, to, to, I don't want to get too crazy. Like, it's crazy and crazy hilarious and crazy hilarious stuff happens in it, but I, right. I don't want to go like off the rails just like, you know, like monkey on a unicycle rides by for no reason. Although we should invent a reason to have a monkey on a unicycle, because that no, be if we're gonna awesome. have a monkey on a unicycle, it should literally just be, and then a monkey on the unicycle drove by, and then they continued on. <laughs> I love what the fuck. <laughs> I love the one line that I wrote in there where, I think it was when Charlie says he knows where the black forest is. He says, "I know where the black forest." Or no, he says, "I want to know about the black forest." The Scots stopped laughing. Everybody went silent. Somewhere, a record scratched. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wrote you back. I was like, I literally LOL'd. I read that to Morgan. She laughed, too. That was great. Oh, but, well, that was the point where you were asking me if you, you felt like it was too much, right? A little bit, yeah. Cause I, I, I thought it was fucking hilarious. Because I honestly picture him like... Yeah, totally. Especially since there's bagpipe music going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the Wicked Witch. Rose Red is protecting her. Um, do you want her to dive out and squirrel suit away? Yes. <laughs> Whenever I say squirrel suit, I always remember us talking to... Um, what's his name? Michael Bay. <laughs> About the squirrel suits in, in Transformers 3. And I was like, that shit looked fake as fuck. And, and he's, he's like, like, those were actual. It was all real. <laughs> it was all real. All of it. Here's the real footage. <laughs> not to, not to name and your drop, reaction but, was the yeah. best, though, was, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Not to name drop for the audience. We got into one of those advanced screenings for Transformers 3, uh, like six months before it came out, just because Zach was on an email list. And we came in, and we didn't even know, but it was the screening where Michael Bay was there like gauging audience reactions and then he had a whole Q&A and I mentioned the squirrel suit said it it wasn't a big deal it wasn't like we were just shooting no, the shit at Michael Bay's you know yeah big deal it was a big deal but it wasn't like we were chilling at his mansion in Hollywood like you know I did later sipping on fuck you <laughs> it was on the Paramount lot so we could say that at least yeah, it was on the Paramount lot but yeah I just don't want people to be all like oh well these guys are douchebags I'm pretty sure they already think that. I'm I'm a bit of a Dave that way. Yeah, they probably already do. Why do you listen to us, dear listener? Okay, so okay. basically the plot is he determines that he has to go after the Wicked Witch. Uh, right. Snow White's about to leave. He convinces her to stay. They go... I feel like I want to explore Snow White a little bit more. Yeah. And Red Rose, honestly. Um... Maybe they're following I Red. Maybe they're on the trail of Red Rose trying to get her to lead them back to the main whatever. And she, following them, they end up with Captain Hook and they end up with, 
these other small bosses or whatever that they Ooh, easily good take out. Yeah. But they're on the trail of Red Rose. Right, right. That's and a great idea. To the witch. Um, but why would she go to the witch? Does, she, does Red Rose know they're on her, her trail? I mean, I would assume she would. You would have to assume that, yeah. So why would she go to the witch? But I like the trail idea. Writing. Ooh, 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 um, Yeah. <laughs> you ready for this? Uh, almost. Yeah. Okay, so we pick up at the beginning of, of Ninja Bread Man 2, and they have been following Red endlessly for, like, mm. weeks or maybe even months, and they're still trailing her, and they trail her to Captain Hook's ship, but by the time they get there and kill everybody on the ship, she's already gone, and they're just like, what the fuck? So finally, they're traveling after her again, and they pass by Master Baker, and so Charlie's just like, dude, we, I, I, need, I need to at least go see him and ask his, his advice or something. And Master Baker says, she's not running from you. She's leading you away. Mm. She's leading you away. And if you can find out what she's trying to protect, that's how you'll find her. That's interesting. I like that. So that's then, good. So then, so then they somehow track it down and figure out that it's the Triple W, and then they're like, boom, bitches, and they go for the Wicked oh, Witch. Oh, dude, okay. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, this is great. So we have, because we can have the first chapter with Captain Hook being the fight scene or, or you yeah. know, whatever, and then once we find out this from Master Baker, they're, they Admiral continue. Hook. What? Admiral Hook. Admiral Hook. Uh, they continue on her path, and they hit the next. They hit the next person in the line that she's leading away from. But this person, they don't kill. They kill everybody around this fucker, like they, the Pied Piper, I guess. And they interrogate him, and he's like the Triple W. I love, I love that name, the Triple yeah. W. And they're like the what? And she's only known as the Triple W from through the, through those um, minions or whatever. Yeah, nice. Um. But then we have. Then does that guy? For one, who is that guy? And for two, does he know where she is? And if he does, she should be like, "There's no way you can get to her. She's protected by the twelve dwarves." Little boy, seven. There's seven dwarves. Whatever. <laughs> Why am I stuck on twelve? The second. What? The second guy. Okay. The second guy should be little boy blue, and I'll tell you why. He should be little boy blue for one joke. You ready for this? Something about blue balls. No. So they get him, and they're about to interrogate him, or they're starting to interrogate him or whatever, and Snow White leans over with a knife, and she holds it to his crotch. <laughs> she says, talk, or I'm going to turn you into little girl blue. <laughs> That's a funny line, but that character is not very well known. Oh, come on. Everybody knows the name, and that means that we can do whatever we want with him. Okay, I think we're going we're gonna to put a pin in that and <laughs> think of other ideas as well. Put a pin in it. I don't like it. it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to note it down, though, because I, like, I didn't like the magical bagpipes at first either. <laughs> but, then... <laughs> but then. But then I thought of a shirt. <laughs> we can even have a shirt with a little girl blue on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Okay, what what's another character we can have? I like the idea of him being like, "There's no way, no way you can get to her because she is protected by the seven. I, I I like the idea of seven dwarfsmen. I don't know why I continue thinking that, like horsemen, but nice. Yeah, they should be called um, the Magnificent Seven, and they should all be armed with pistols. <laughs> They should totally be cowboys. Yes. Cowboy dwarves <laughs> who ride on ponies. <laughs> what are the really, really tiny horses that look like, um, what are they? You mean fucking ponies? Not, it's not a pony, though. It has a specific name. But oh, I, that's the miniature horses? Weird. Yeah. What are they called? What are they called? I'm Googling it. That's fantastic. The magnificent. <laughs> 
<laughs> Magnificent Seven are fucking dwarf. <laughs> there should be a tumbleweed. <laughs> they kicked open the door to the tower. <laughs> a low whistle cut the air. A tumbleweed rolled across the entranceway. Ninja Charlie Brand, man, look to, to his right. Where the hell did it... Charlie, Charlie leaned in to see where the hell it had come from, but it he couldn't tell, and it had vanished. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're just called miniature horses. There, that, there should be a dwarf there that pushed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's another one on the other side that did the whistle. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. How long have you been waiting for <laughs> A us? long time. Oh, my God. You have no idea. <laughs> the magnificent They're going to have to change months. my name to Constipady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. The Magnificent Seven are fucking... That's going to be great. Shouldn't be a tower, though. Can't be a tower anymore, though, because they have to ride around on horses. They're dwarves, of course. They can ride around in a, in a they tower. They can ride around on horses in a tower. <laughs> if you, nice if you can have a book it's... with unicorns and, and fucking cowboys, then we can have horses inside of a goddamn tower. Yeah, 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 totally. Nice pony. It's a miniature horse. <laughs> if they look um, like Clydesdales, but they're tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called a miniature horse. Oh, that's not That's the common. name. I pulled up the Wikipedia article and it was just it was miniature horse. It wasn't like a, a breed. Yeah, that's not a very fun name though. All right, Whatever. find something better. Um, I love that idea though. Met the Magnificent Seven. It's fantastic. By the way, I haven't figured one out yet, but we gotta have a unicorn western reference in here somewhere. Um. Okay, that's fine with me. Um, just. That's going to be all you because I haven't read them yet. You cock. <laughs> You're such a cock. <laughs> I have other things to do. Especially since they haven't read yeah, my single I don't. Book. I don't. You, you have things to do. You read a lot faster than I do. Okay, well, fine. Flattery will get you off the hook this time. And you're really cute. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, no, but I, I like you know I've read their other stuff. I've read you know Yesterday's Gone and I've read Fat Vampire. I love both of those. Just haven't gone to Unicorn Western. Oh my God, this picture it looks like a pig. <laughs> they should ride around on pigs. No, no, miniature horses is way funnier. But this miniature horse looks like a pig. I'm gonna link it. I'll put it in the show notes. I'll probably forget. Yeah, probably. Oh come on, copy paste. Okay, think of another person about besides Little Boy Blue. I have it noted, but um, do we have any Twitter people tweeting? No, probably not. <laughs> no, definitely he's not. D and D, and it's really late. Um, it could be the Pied Piper again. He's just like, oh, not this fucker again. <laughs> oh, I expected that he was dead. Maybe he is. Yeah, he probably is. I think he would die. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you left the whole play checkers in there, right? I think you did. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Okay. That's such an awesome line. Like, I'm actually worried that I can't... That, that like, that's from something. Well, if it is, it's... I mean, I don't know. Google it. Just did. Um, it could be Jack and Jill, the second person that they go to. Yeah, I don't think so because we already had the Hansel and Gretel, and I think it's too close. Oh, it's another duo. Yeah, you're right. Um, and their brother and sister. I think. Yeah. Um, but Jack Just and Jill's Jack a good idea. From Jack and the Beanstalk? No, because then you got to have the giant and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I just pictured Jack with two, like, large things hanging around. It's like, what are those? The giant's balls. Take a memento every time I kill one. Um, we have Captain Hook. Pinocchio. Do we want it to be a girl? Ooh, Pinocchio. He could try to lie his way out. <laughs> <laughs> Why do 
does anybody tell you a secret? You're the easiest <laughs> person to interrogate ever. <laughs> And every time his nose grows an inch, they cut it off. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Talk. That hurts! Your wood! <laughs> yeah, well... That's what she said. <laughs> um, do you know if Ma uh, Lexi Maxwell is doing a Pinocchio one where it's... Picocchio. It, is, is it? Is it? I totally... Yep. That's hilarious. It's a thing. She did little, little, slutty little mermaid. Though. Slutty little mermaid, Picacchio, and Snow White, and the seven kinky dwarves. And I, I've discussed them with Sean. I, I, I'm actually, I'm helping her out with something on it, which I don't know how much Sean wants. So you're to writing see. erotica? Yeah, I'm writing erotica. No, 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 I'm not. I'm, hel I'm helping her out on one thing because she's. Lacking certain resources in in a couple. Of, eh. um, no, I'm she's sending her naked some, pictures of myself. No, I'm not. She's lacking certain resources in a. She's lacking a couple of skill sets that I happen to have, which Sean hooked us up in order for me to help her out with something that she's doing. Um, so I have read those books and they're hilarious, like drop dead hilarious. All three That's of them. That's good. Yeah, I'm glad she's doing well on that. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> um, oh, okay, holy so shit, dude, we're way over. We're way, way over. What time is it? It's eleven fifty-six. No, I mean, like, what? How long have we been going? We're like one twelve. Okay, <laughs> let's wrap it up. All right, um, we got the bare bones out. Uh, we will put. Uh, we will uh, pump this out as fast as we possibly can. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Check out the website, thestorytellingpodcast.com. Uh, leave us comments there on the episodes. Subscribe in iTunes or the other one that I submitted to this week, which I can't remember. Um, my blog is gbr0binson.com. Zach's is zcbolger.com. I never Silva's blog. Never, yeah, Zach never blogs. He's terrible at it. Um, but uh, you should go there anyway. And buy his goddamn book, Danny Calloway and the Puzzle House. And it's only four ninety nine on sale. Not really on sale, though. Not really on sale at all. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Four ninety nine for sale. Shh. Sorry. Penis. <laughs>